Well, here's the start of another video. I am installing the moisture tester on the round baler. And kind of got everything laid out here. These are the little sensor pads. Um, I've got this uh, hydraulic twine arm tore down. Uh, I got the piston and the collar at the hydraulic shop. They're matching up seals. They had to order uh, the inner seal, but um, it was leaking and it wasn't quite cutting the twine properly. Um, I had to kind of, uh, this is your cutter here and the arm basically, the hydraulic arm activates this cutter when you go to cut the twine and it wasn't cutting uh, properly because it had a leak. So, and then I have a couple of hydraulic lines getting replaced. So anyways, I'm gonna mount this sensor, these sensors on this baler. I've got this arm down to keep this door from coming on me, but basically what you gotta do is uh, slope right here in the front. That's where the hay come across, comes across to measure the moisture. And um, so when these mount in the chamber, and this is a template, tells you what size holes to drill, what size bits to use. And it says to get it as low as possible in the chamber. So it's gonna mount something like that on the inside. But I'm gonna put the template out here to uh, drill the holes. So uh, follow along if you uh, wanna see how this is installed, how it works out. And I'll be using it uh, second cutting. So, and then the monitor, uh, I built this little temporary bracket gonna sit like that on the pillar and the monitor's gonna sit back there on that post. One thing I want to note is I got the hydraulic line. If you saw my previous video on installing the three-point lift cylinder, here is the hydraulic line that I need to get installed. Uh, I used a, and here's the pin. I used, if you didn't see that video, um, I installed this three point cylinder right here. And I just had a line made up temporarily until the correct part came in and it just came in. So subscribe if you haven't already hit the like button. If you enjoy the videos, um, see if I can get this channel rocking and rolling. Uh, so I can invest in better equipment and put a little more time and effort into video editing. It takes a lot of time to make these. So Okay, when you're putting these things together, uh, you really got to pay attention to the instructions and there's a reason why the quarter, the back holes are quarter inch versus 11 64ths. Uh, so when you put these in, your front bolt, the smaller hole, just takes your typical nut, uh, bolt, lock washer, and nut, but your back hole, where it goes through this metal strip, uh, that quarter inch hole, this little piece here goes inside the quarter inch hole, and then this is a washer, and it basically keeps this from grounding out to the baler um, let me see if I can do this here without dropping any of this because this stuff's itty bitty. Your rear hole is bigger than your front. And this is what it looks like when you get it on. But you can see why. Let's see if I can set the camera down. So your bolt that goes up here in that metal strip. Pretty tough to do holding the camera. That's, yeah, so those keep the uh, bolts from grounding out on the on the metal. And then your wiring goes on here with another uh, nut. And then I'm just gonna run it up along here. There's a hole already. And then I'm gonna go up over here and then down inside uh, this door. And I'm just gonna follow the hydraulic lines uh, with the wiring out this hole and come down and into the baler. So it's pretty easy. Just follow the instructions. 
So it's kind of hard to tell, but I put the sensor at an angle because when the gate shuts, it's not uh, perfectly vertical. So if I had followed, if I had put it square with this, then the sensor would have been going up. And I want to point it straight towards the pickup as the hay comes in, because the hay's gonna, the hay's gonna come in, and it and it won't take a reading until the bell is formed. Um, in the instructions it said loose hay. It won't. It'll be an inac inaccurate reading. Once the bell is formed is when you get your accurate readings. All right, I got the wiring uh, ran, and I ended up. There's a gap down here. I ended up drawing a hole on the top of this. To run the wire through and then this is an existing hole and then I'm going across this tube where it pivots I was gonna go over down the side back around but I've decided to just keep it all in the same wiring harness over here uh, I'm probably gonna send just down to the side of the baler somehow with some self tapping screws and then uh, this is where it came out on that side and see so you can see it's going into this harness down here that way I only have to run it and there's quite a bit of wire, but all, it's gonna be all tied into this harness, both sides coming down through here. But one thing I wanted to mention is when you run this, uh, some of your holes may not be big enough to run this plug through. So I would start with this end, the smaller end, and then run it through the baler so you can get it in tight places. So, let me get this ran and then check back in. Well, I got all the wiring ran for the sensor pads. I still gotta go and buy some uh, smaller tabs to straighten up this wiring. This is, I stuck one up here, it's a little too big, but it allows me to adjust the slack in the wire if I need to, but I'm gonna get smaller ones so I can clean up the wire and run it along the rail. Um, and I just put that wire loom in it just to, didn't really need it, but just to give it a little bit of extra protection. But it goes across to that side. Here's that sensor pad and they both come out and meet up here. And then I just kept it in that wiring um, all the way down and then when I got out here, there's a lot of tape. I didn't want to cut all the tape, so I just kept it on the outside of the wire loom. And there's hold downs inside here. And then just kept in that wire. And then when I got towards the end, I just taped it up and left it loose so I can plug them into the uh, monitor whenever I hook up and unhook. So there's that. Now I gotta get that monitor installed and find power source for it. Here it has a cigarette lighter plug for its power the Baylor uh, siren. So what I did was, and I like how I can remove it from the tractor if I need to when I'm not bailing. I just spliced in the power source of that uh, moisture meter into this wiring harness here so that I can remove it whenever I'm not using it. And then let me hop up there and show you the, how I mounted it. Up all this wiring, but this is the basic of it. Here's a cigarette lighter plug for the power source. The sirens, wired in along with the power source for the meter here and uh, what's nice about the new hall is it's got this rubber plug you can pull it out and run your wiring through it and then shut your glass put it back in and it closes off that hole the best it can and uh, still keep everything cool but so I'm gonna run all that wiring through there uh, once I get it going but I just had a piece of metal, an L bracket, that I cut off at the top and uh, drilled holes for my mounts. Those holes were already there on the pillar. You got two holes here. The correct mount to buy, it goes down like this and it mounts uh, to this pillar and it's, it's kind of like an L shape and it's a solid mount. Uh, they're pretty expensive and they're expensive because they come with wiring and plugs and they're pre-made to hook up uh, tractor equipment. But for now, this is temporary. I'm gonna run this bracket. It's not gonna last long and I'll tell you why. This thing's gonna vibrate quite a bit and get on my nerves. So 
This is all just temporary to get it all set up and ready to go. I'm probably gonna run, run it like this during second cutting because I still have to put this baler together and I also have to mount that 25 gallon uh, preservative, uh, hay preservative sprayer down there. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty neat, pretty simple. You can uh, change your uh, baler type from square to round. There's a little round right there, square. So there's round and then you can uh, set your limits. You can, you can, uh, you gotta offset uh, uh, setting where if you know it's going to be moist you can uh, adjust an offset reading in case uh, you know you don't want to hear the alarm go off all the time and there's your low I gotta figure out how to use it but you can set your low limit for it to make it make an alarm go off and your high limit Let's see if I can make this there you go so so you can set your high limit at so let's say we want it to go off at 25% moisture your low limit. And I believe this is the same system as the John Deere. Well, I'm curious to know if I unplug it, is it gonna reset everything? That's the boot up menu. Yeah, looks like it saved all the settings by once I killed the power. I unplugged the power source, but it still kept all my settings cool. All right, so I'm gonna save this for another video. This is the uh, sprayer tank I bought that I'm gonna mount on this baler. It comes with a hose and nozzles. It's a hay preservative sprayer. It's gonna mount down here on this pickup wheel and uh, I'm gonna run uh, preservative when it's high moisture or when I'm, when I'm in a hurry or if I ever get caught in rain. So uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. And if you haven't, subscribe. See if you can't get this channel to grow. And uh, until then, see you next time.